Hello, and welcome to the computer-aided technology presentation of SOLIDWORKS and the power of the 3D Experience Platform. Today, we'll take a look at the 3D Experience Platform and how it can help your company become connected on many different levels. I'd like to start off by asking you a question. Do you use the cloud? You may think that you don't, but of course you do every day. How do you listen to music? I still love vinyl and CDs, but I also use streaming services like Amazon Music and Spotify. The next one is easy. What do you use for communication? You probably avoid the post office like the plague, and instead you use Gmail, Hangouts, Teams, Texts, and things like that. How about storage? Dropbox, Google Drive. Where do you store pictures? Amazon Photos, Google Photos. And why do you use these tools? Well, for the flexibility. They're cost effective. They're device independent. In the case of picture sharing, and it's for collaboration purposes, and they're always up to date. One way to make sure everyone in your company is connected is to get your information on the cloud. On the simplest level, the 3D Experience Cloud is a collection of data centers placed all around the globe. Your data is stored on a secure cloud server that only you have access to. Right now, you may be using many different disconnected applications every day. Office 365 alone has more than 15 applications. You're probably paying subscription to many of these companies and fairly large IT commitment and server requirements. And most important, like we've said, most likely there's no communication between these apps. The 3D Experience platform offers one central, secure, connected location for your apps. One subscription, no IT, no server required, no VPN to get into your data or your apps, and a very high level of communication all within the cloud. Facebook, Amazon, YouTube, Netflix, Google Docs, these are all universal platforms that users are comfortable with. Some of them, like Google Docs, are even considered collaborative platforms. And they all run on a web browser. The 3D Experience platform gets your company connected by providing the tools to bring everyone in the product development process all together. A web-based system of apps allows users to collaborate, manage, and design anywhere at any time on any device. It was built from the ground up with design in mind, but it also allows customers to take advantage of many different apps in their everyday workflows. Design communities allow users to collaborate on design projects, share ideas, and always be up to date. Project management allows users to streamline their design process with tasks that keep everyone on target. You can store and manage your files without the need of any IT infrastructure. Although you may already use SOLIDWORKS on the desktop today, there are additional design tools that will allow you to work from anywhere on virtually any device through the convenience of your web browser. You'll also have access to the powerful simulation tools that leverage the cloud computing to validate your designs. Tight integration with desktop SOLIDWORKS allows you to bring the work done in the cloud back to your desktop and vice versa, which of course means you can still take advantage of all of the tools that SOLIDWORKS offers today, such as locally installed simulation tools, CAM, inspection, and more. The dashboard is how each user can get connected to the data they need on the 3D Experience platform. Just the same as how a dashboard in your car provides the important information you need to drive or navigate the roads. Imagine if you could rearrange your dashboard and add more indicators or feedback if you wanted, or just simplify it down to what you want. XShape is a browser-based freeform design tool that can be accessed virtually anywhere on any device. It uses subdivision, or sub-D, modeling for creating stylized organic geometry faster than traditional tools could. With sub-D modeling, geometry is pushed and pulled like digital clay to reach desired forms. XShape is fully interoperable with SOLIDWORKS Desktop CAD and XDesign, as we'll see in this presentation. XDesign is a browser-based 3D CAD modeling application to quickly generate concept models. And like all other 3D Experience apps, XDesign can be accessed virtually anywhere on any device. XDesign offers intuitive parametric modeling of 3D concepts, parts, and assemblies. And concepts can be further vetted using design guidance, which predicts necessary geometry to withstand simulated forces. 
X-Design, like X-Shape, is fully interoperable with SolidWorks Desktop CAD and the other 3D Experience apps. Throughout today's webinar, our presenters will be represented by avatars in the bottom right of the screen. These avatars are not part of the 3D Experience platform. We're just using them here so you know who has the ball during each segment of the presentation. Bob, our project manager, is going to be leading us through the product development cycle. He's located in Chicago. Randy, pictured on the right, is our engineer. He's located in Cincinnati. And stuck in the middle, yours truly, Todd, our designer, I'm located in Indianapolis. We're all working remotely, collaborating on the 3D Experience platform to take the existing C-Scooter design and update it with new styling and a swappable battery. Some of you joining us today may fulfill one or many of the roles we present today. During our time, we're going to cover the following. We're going to collaborate with our team in a fully connected environment. We're going to streamline our task and deliverables with, with Project Planner. We're going to leverage the platform inside of SolidWorks. We're going to make some curvy stuff out of digital clay. We're going to create design intent using a cloud-based parametric. These tools will work on any device, PC, Mac, or mobile. We're going to convey that information to all the stakeholders involved with markups in a single environment. So first up, we're going to go through collaboration using the SWIM communities. I'm going to kick off the design process by assigning some tasks, and one of those being getting the ball rolling by getting data up to the platform for visibility for everyone. So dashboards can be lots of things to lots of different people. Todd and Randy are using CAD tools and data management. For me, I've got tabs about planning my projects, market research, vital company stats, and other marketing efforts. But like we've said, everyone can tailor the experience to their needs and goals. On screen, you can see the results of a survey from an outside market research company. You can see battery life, styling, camera mounts, GPS recovery, and working on the handles are all things that our customers were requesting. So I'm gonna go back to my team and see what we can do with some of these results. With our communities, I'm able to go in and share with our team that we have a new opportunity for some design updates. I'm gonna share with them the data that we have via image and then I'll ask for some feedback and maybe some ideas. Once I get that feedback, I'll start assigning tasks to the different stakeholders in the team so they can start working on their project. Because we're working in a social collaboration environment, I get notified when someone ats me or responds to a post I've made. Here I see Bob's post about some marketing information and chime in on the new design opportunity for the C-Scooter. Now that Todd has responded to my post, I'm going to go into my project planning app and I'm going to assign him and Randy some tasks. First, Todd's going to get some tasks for creating some concept sketches and Randy's also going to get a task to finish up some research on some new batteries that we've been looking at. We'll also get a task for uploading the original SOLIDWORKS design to the platform. So then I, the engineer, get notified that a task has been assigned to me by the manager, Bob. That task is telling me that I need to upload the original C-Scooter SOLIDWORKS files to the 3D Experience platform so that we can all collaborate on them. I'll move that task to in progress to let everyone know I'm working on that. So here we are in regular desktop SOLIDWORKS 2020. This C-Scooter file is an assembly of around 70 parts. Right inside of the SOLIDWORKS task pane, I have a tab for SOLIDWORKS PLM services. That's my connection to the 3D Experience Cloud. You can see the assembly structure of the file I have open, and you'll notice the red floppy disk icon indicating that these files have not been saved up to the platform yet. I'll simply click on the top level and tell it to save. On this next screen, I can deselect any parts or subassemblies that I might not want saved for some reason, and I can also set or change revisions here. I'll enter in a note saying that these files are, are the initial check-in, 
And just like that, all the files are uploaded to a controlled collaborative space on the 3D Experience platform. If we take a look in Windows Explorer, you'll see I also have a working directory that anything you upload or pull down is copied to. This is one of the great benefits of most PDM systems. You will be working locally on these files, not working across the internet or network. The only time there's network internet traffic is during uploads or downloads. And then when I'm done, I'll of course move that task to complete to let everyone know that the files have been uploaded. Now that we have some data up on the platform, I want to take you on a quick tour around using my dashboard. As mentioned, this dashboard is a customized set of tools to get me the information I need in whatever layout I see fit. Here in the Files tab, we can see that all of the files I just uploaded are there. If I want to take a look at any of those files, I can just drag them over into my 3D Play window on the lower right. This is a universal viewer for CAD models, Word documents, PDFs, and many other formats. Inside there, I can look at the model, make an exploded view, take section views, take measurements, and even do a markup if needed, which we'll see more of later. Rather than browsing for files all the time, since the data is being automatically managed in a PLM database, we have amazingly fast search capabilities. Once I get some results, I can narrow them down with tags, like what collaborative space they're in, what file type they are, who's responsible for them, or who owns that file. From there, I can of course find out information on the file, and even use the 3D Play tool there if I want. One of the really great benefits of doing this all in a browser window with integrated apps is being able to just drag and drop the files from one app to another, or one window to another in this case. Here I'll drop that C-Scooter assembly into the Collaborative Lifecycle app where I can see the workflow states and make changes if wanted. I can also see all the related objects to this assembly, and then of course browse to one of those files to do anything I would like with it. Circling back to the swim community, I see that Randy, our engineer, is excited about the Sea Scooter opportunity. And I get an alert that Bob has assigned a task to me. I'll go check out the details of the task on my collaborative task widget. Create concept sketches for new styling. Cool. Looks like Bob wants some ideas of what the new design could look like for the team to think about. I'll move the task to in progress so that Bob knows I'm starting the task and then I'll get to work. Over the weekend, I was mowing with my battery-powered lawnmower and thought, why don't we use a swappable battery for the sea scooter? I want to share this with the team, so I'm posting a new idea. I can upload media directly from my computer to my post, which helps me quickly and clearly communicate ideas to my team. I also want to attach the concept sketches I made for the new sea scooter design. These are things I've already uploaded to the cloud, so I simply click what it is I want to attach to my idea. I'll publish my idea and review what I've shared. And that looks good. That should get the idea across. Cool. I can always edit my posts if there's something I want to add or change later. Now that I've published the concepts, I'll attach this idea as a deliverable for the task that Bob gave me. The platform lets me drag information from one tab to another, so it's easy to handle and share my data. Once the idea is attached, I'll move my task to the Done column. This will let Bob know that the concepts are ready to review. OK, the team has made some decisions, and the project is a go. Now it's time for me to go to my happy place, X-Shape, where I can push and pull my ideas into reality. Once I model up the new design for the Sea scooter I'll create a 3D markup to share some more information with Randy, our engineer, so he knows exactly what I'm thinking for the placement of the battery. Now, in X-Shape, I want to reference the original Sea scooter design that Randy uploaded earlier. So I'll use the built-in search, which makes finding data easy. I can filter results and preview data within the search window, so I know exactly what I'm looking at. Here I found the assembly that I want to design around, so I'll simply drag it into X-Shape and import it, where I can look at it whenever I need to.
X shape and X design allow you to hide, show, and change the opacity of models as you develop your designs. X shape and X design also allow you to insert, position, and scale images for your reference. You can hide, show, and change their opacity as well. So you have just the right information at any given time in your design cycle. I want to see both the original design and the concept sketch as I start generating forms for the new sea scooter but I'll also want to be able to hide them when I don't need them or if they start interfering with my view. With XShape, you begin by selecting a primitive form that best represents the geometry you're creating. Fun sounding quad ball here has the kind of structure that I think I need. It's easy to change the scale and add or remove segments to get the amount of detail you want. And models in XShape are overlaid with this kind of grid these are the subdivisions in sub-D modeling. There are loops, faces, and vertices that can be selected and manipulated by dragging components of this neat little tool that pops up called the robot. As you see here, manual input of values is possible, but the freedom of X-shape is being able to drag or rotate or scale your selections on the fly. The arrows translate or push and pull your selections, while the arcs rotate your selections about the robot axis. To scale your selection, you select one or more dots on the robot to scale in one or more directions. I'll make a few more refinements, like squashing down the head here. And we'll pull out on the nose a little bit. And then let's tuck in this chin. Now, as you see here, you can reorient the robot to allow you to push the geometry in different directions. I think this is a good start, so let's look at it compared to the original design. Now, as you can see, the forms in X shape start out very curvy, but you might want to add some sharp or sharper edges, and that's easy. Here, I want more of a break between the top and bottom of the form, so simply select the edges you want to sharpen and click on the crease tool. You can use the pop-up slider to adjust how much sharpness you want in your edges. It's not all or nothing. You get to decide what looks good. And I think that looks good. Now let's compare our form to the concept sketch and look at the details we want to create next. I can change the opacity of our freeform body and see the sketch for where I want to some inset panels on the sides. But while I'm here, the form stays active to allow some on the fly edits, which as a designer, I can't resist. So I'll pull a little bit more here on the nose and we'll make some more modifications to the top of that body. Now maintaining symmetry is one of the most common design needs. When using symmetry in X shape, what I do on one side is automatically added to the other. And when you need more detail, X shape allows you to further subdivide these faces. You can subdivide single or multiple faces in the same step and choose how much of a transition to include from the original edges. Now here's where we get to push and pull more on our design. And thanks to symmetry, what I do on one side is automatically captured on the opposite side of the model. Now, Todd, I've noticed that you haven't created a single feature or surface to create this shape. Is this normally how you work inside of X-Shape? That's right. So in X-Shape, we're working with primitive forms that we can push and pull, re reposition the vertices, the faces. Uh, what I've done in minutes here would take hours upon hours using traditional surface modeling tools. Okay, let's look at adding the motor housing. We want to make sure that this is close to the original design because we're going to be reusing existing components. and They all need to fit the same way. We can change our transparency and see where to locate the housing, and we'll add a new cone primitive to manipulate. Once the scale and position is determined, we'll then look at refining the design. Simply drag this into position, where I want the back of this cone to look like it lines up to where the back of the motor housing currently is. Selection filters allow us to quickly find the geometry we want to edit. Some scaling and minor adjustments make more of a blend between the two different forms.
with that blend looking good, let's look at flattening the back of the cone so it aligns to the existing gearbox. We'll give it a little push and pull here. That looks great. Now let's look at adding the nozzle for the propeller. Now, Todd, couldn't you have just done that with a simple revolve feature? Now you could have, Bob, but look what I can do here in X shape. I can grab these vertices and loops and I can drag them on the fly to get a much more interesting form without having to create profile sketches for sweeps or lofts or guide curves. Okay, definitely can't do that with a revolve. As we add a dorsal fin to our design, we want to make sure that this design is watertight. X-Shape offers tools like align cage points and crease to smush newly added forms to existing bodies in our design. A few more modifications to the dorsal fin and we're ready to move on to the side fins. So far, we've only been adding primitive forms to create model geometry, and in this design, it's made sense to do it that way. However, here we're going to look at adding material to our main body that we use to form the side fins. These faces are first subdivided, then more material is added using the extrude feature. As you can see, symmetry is still active, and what I create on one side of the model is replicated on the opposite side. Once the position and angle of these vertices looks good, we'll add a second extrude to give us the amount of material and granularity to get the fins that we want. And that looks good. Let's look at refining the handles. We want to sharpen the leading and trailing edges of the handle, and we'll do that by adding loops closer to those sides. This would be a huge effort in a surface modeling tool where we'd be adding new guide curves or profiles. Here, we're letting X-Shape do the heavy lifting for us. And we can smooth out the handle further by deleting this original loop, and that looks great. Finally, we'll add some pads for finger grips and pull them out just enough to get a good grip. We'll simply subdivide these three surfaces. And give them a little bit of a tug. And that will complete our design. Now, before I pass this off to Randy, I'm going to pop into X-Design to mirror the handle, combine the bodies, and next we'll look at creating a markup. Now that the form is designed, it's time to communicate some design intent. As we've seen, 3D Experience has many solutions for communicating and collaborating with my team. One of these solutions is 3D Markup. Now, 3D Markup is a communication tool that allows me to generate one or more views on which I can add comments so that everyone understands the design intent that I'm pursuing. I can create sections through the model, hide some components, highlight others, and orient the position of the model to best communicate my intent. I'll add a note here to let Randy know what I was thinking for the location and style of the swappable battery. So I want the battery to insert through the top and I want it to have a smooth offset surface so that it blends in with the main body of the new design. Bob has assigned a task to Randy and me to review the design and markup. With both the design and markup complete, I want to share them with the team. Using search, I'll find both the model and markup. 
and then I'll drag and drop them into the task's attachments. This will make it easy for all involved to find and review the data we've created. Once that's all set, I'll go ahead and drag this task to in progress, and we're ready to move on. So Todd, our designer, just showed you some awesome and really fun functionality that is something you definitely cannot do in regular desktop SolidWorks. Next, I'm going to show you XDesign. It's the more traditional 3D parametric CAD. However, remember, just like everything else that you've seen, this is totally running on the cloud, so it can be used on any device, tablet, PC, Mac, etc., anywhere, unlike desktop SolidWorks. Those of you that already have access to seats of desktop SolidWorks may feel like you wouldn't need XDesign. You definitely could pull the files back down into SolidWorks, which we will show later, and continue any traditional CAD work there. However, think about other divisions in your company who may not have access to SolidWorks or don't know how to use it. Also, as you watch this next section, think about how quick and easy it would be to do concepts in XDesign. And finally, there's many new companies out there just getting started with designing products who may not want all the IT overhead and installation and maintenance of a traditionally installed CAD package. So let's take a look. The first thing I'll do is take a look at the 3D markup that Todd, our designer, created. It's super easy to find the file he made because he attached it right to the task. I can open the file in 3D markup directly from there. I can see here in the markup that he wants the pop-out swappable battery to go on top, and I can see the existing old battery placement and also where I'll have to interface with the electronics in the bottom. He also created a swim post with this same info on our community for everyone to refer to and comment on if necessary. I show that I've finished the task of reviewing the markup and I see that I now have a new task in my to-do to start creating the battery. Todd also nicely attached his finished X-shaped design model to this task so it's super easy for me to open that file as well without having to know what he called it or where it is and so on. So here we are in XDesign. The only real difference in this and what Todd showed you is basically the toolbars at the bottom. Here we'll go in and hide the original SolidWorks model so we can see everything inside. I'll then create a brand new part in the context of the assembly for the battery and give it a name. To start modeling, we're going to use some surfacing tools. We want the top of this pop-out swappable battery to match the shape of Todd's design that he made in X-Shape. So I'm going to start off by grabbing some of those surfaces on the top of his design and offsetting them out a little bit. We'll also offset some of the faces on the top of that fin to eventually do a cutout in the top of this. We'll extend these surfaces out a little bit so that they go past each other. And then we'll use a mutual trim command on these surfaces, selecting which pieces we want to keep and which pieces we want to remove. Finally, then to get this into a solid, we'll use the thicken command on those surfaces, and we'll even add an offset inside that thicken. We'll change the color here quickly, and we'll take a look and see how it looks in the context of the assembly with Todd's design and the internal components in place. All right, a little more work on the top of this battery that everyone will see from the outside. We're gonna fill it some corners. And notice here that when I select an edge, I have a little tool that pops up called the Selection Helper to help me select other edges that it suggests that I may want to fill it as well. So it grabs that opposite side corner. Same thing when picking the bottom corner, it suggests the other bottom corner. And we'll put a couple fillets on the inside by picking one of those inside corners at the top, and it suggests the other inside corner for me. This just saves from selecting many, many edges at a time. 
Next thing we're going to do is create a couple planes to do some 2D sketching. We'll create a plane up at the top of this edge, and then we'll offset that down somewhere so we can start sketching. In this 2D parametric sketch, we'll just start off with a center line. You can see here I'm accessing a shortcut toolbar with the most common commands that I use all the time, as opposed to having to go down to the toolbars at the bottom always. Here we'll just draw a couple of lines and a center point arc at the bottom. And of course, once we've got one half how we like it, we can mirror that over to get the other half and keep some nice symmetry in this sketch. I'll anchor down the top here and add a dimension for the overall height of the bottom of the battery that I want. And then it'll just be a matter of dragging this bottom right corner to try to match the outside shape of that cover and complement that as well as we can. We can extrude this several different ways. The easiest way is just to pull on that arrow and drag. Now that may not be exactly the extrude we're looking for, uh, but in this case, all the extrude and cut features that we do in X-Design are super features. And we can easily change this extrude to a cut. Or we can go back and edit that and change that to a thin feature, removing material, adding material, all kinds of different options. Now, Randy, can't we already do this inside of SOLIDWORKS? Definitely not. Once you're committed to an extrude inside of SOLIDWORKS, you're stuck in an extrude. You can keep your sketch, but you'd have to go and delete that feature, change it to a cut, change it to a thin feature, something else like that. Here we'll switch it to an extrude in two directions. We'll go blind downward, and then for the up direction, we'll extrude up to that cover that I created. We'll also add a little draft and take a look at a side view to make sure it's drafting the correct way. I don't necessarily want this extrusion going normal to the sketch plane, so we'll give it a direction, picking this edge in the front, to tilt that extrusion back at an angle and give me the shape that I want. Just a matter of filleting the four corners and then running a fillet around the bottom to complete this design. We'll take a look at the battery in context of the assembly and see how it fits in place. And we can see here where it's gonna interface down with the electronics in the bottom where it would plug in. We'll save this file so that everyone else could access this if needed. Just like Todd, I also created a 3D markup. And here I'm showing where I envision that the battery would attach in the bottom of the pocket and make the connection to the electronics. I'll go in and move the battery to design task to done and to be nice, I'll also attach my battery part by doing a quick search on the right-hand side and then dragging that file in. I'll also drag in the markup I made so everyone can also find that easily to review. I'm so nice to you guys, right? Okay, the last thing we definitely wanna show here is taking all of this data back down into desktop SOLIDWORKS to do some final work. Now, a lot of what we think would need to be done in desktop SOLIDWORKS could actually be done on the cloud still with X shape and X design. But each of you will have to decide where that dividing line is and when you take the files back into desktop SOLIDWORKS, if you do at all. So back in SOLIDWORKS 2020, I have access to the same powerful search of my entire PLM database to quickly find the Dolphin redesign file on the platform. Directly from there, I can just do an open on the data that was created in the X-Design and X-Shape apps on the cloud. The files are downloaded to my local working directory and then opened up in SOLIDWORKS. If we look at the tree, we see that this part was embedded into another part, and we can see the green arrow there, meaning that there's a live link back to the X-Shape model. So if there are any changes done there, I can quickly get them and update my SOLIDWORKS model. We can also see that the import diagnostics is telling us that this is a super clean solid body and we should have no trouble continuing to work on it from here. I'm not gonna show you all of the detail work done in SOLIDWORKS, but basically I'm creating some surfaces at the intersections of what I consider to be different bodies for manufacturing this and then using the split command to break them apart into pieces. If we do a draft analysis on the main body, That'll help us find the parting line. And then I use that to create a surface to split that in half as well. Any of these individual bodies, of course, could then be shelled and so on. But here, we'll show that being done to just one of the handles. Of course, this could be split in half if needed. Molds could be made. 
CAM tool paths could be run, on and on, all using the familiar tools you were used to using in desktop SolidWorks. So hopefully you see here that X-Design and X-Shape are complementary tools to SolidWorks Desktop and definitely not meant to be a strict replacement of it. Last thing I want to point out is that with the power of the PLM services on the 3D Experience platform and all of that data being maintained on the cloud, if there are ever any updates to the X-Shape model, all I have to do is go over to the task pane and choose Reload from Server. The model would update in SOLIDWORKS and my downstream features would remain. Okay, so now it's time for our manager, Bob, to take a look at all of this work we've done. Right, Bob? Hey, Bob, are you there? Bob, where are you? Oh, uh, Randy, hi. Um, I'm not in my office right now, um, but I, yeah, uh, golf course. Um, they just opened them back up. So, oh, so you've done some work. Let me let me grab some grab my phone here. So, with this being able to be run on any device, I'm able to open up the markups in the 3D environment that you have on my phone while I'm on the 18th T. Be able to come in, do some markups, validate. Well, I, I need to look at the gears here in a little bit, so I'm going to make some notes for myself there. Um, I need to talk to the electrical team about the circuit board and where we're going to put maybe a GPS charger in. And maybe we'll... I really like the way that battery looks, so that's that's a great job, Todd and Randy. I really like that. But we do need to get that other battery out of there. But um, we haven't updated the guts for the next that next round, so this is this is some great, amazing work. And the nice thing is, because I was out of the office, that still means I can continue our project on to the next step. Now that I've got my clubs put away and my golf shoes off, let's go through what we've done today. We've collaborated with our team with a fully connected environment using 3D Swim. We've helped streamline our task and our deliverables using Project Planner. We've leveraged a platform inside of SOLIDWORKS pulling data up and down from the platform into standard SOLIDWORKS. We made Kirby stuff going into Todd's happy place. We've also gone to Randy's happy place by going and adding design intent to our parametric models on any device we want to, be that Mac, PC, or even Linux or a mobile device. And we did that while communicating that information with a markup in a single environment on a web browser. This presentation was a lot of fun. Todd, Randy, and I truly had a collaborative environment in the 3D Experience platform. If you'd like to know more information about that, please contact us at info at CATI.com or 888-308-2284. Once again, thank you for attending our presentation and have an amazing day.